It's Talking Baseball's first guest appearance, and he is Trevor Ploof. You already saw it in the title. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Talking Baseball. My name is John Boy, and I'm joined by always my good pal Jake Story Alley. Jake, how you doing? Doing well, Jim. Winding down. What is it? Tuesday. Um, Your favorite day of the week. Yeah, did some work. Went to a yogurt class. Cooked a cooked some animal on the grill. Uh, some. R.I.P. Noodle, my dog, but I'm good, man. I'm uh, I'm excited for the people to hear Ploof Master Flex, our dude. Ploofy the Ploofster. Ploofy Ploof. That's dumb. Uh, this is our, I think it's, it's our, you said this when we were interviewing him. You said it's our first guest, right? I'm talking baseball. Yeah, unless you a, got someone else. I don't no, know. No, I can't remember. We had a lot on talking, talking Yanks, obviously. This is the first time I'm talking baseball, so we're excited to bring that to you guys. We're going to winter meetings in three days, so hopefully we'll have tons of guests there and do much more interviews. In the future, we want to do more once we think it's a possibility for us and it's easier. Um, Ploof was great. I think he's been doing a lot with us. So I'm going to save everything from the interview. With the interview, we talked for an hour. We covered the Astro scandal. We covered his career covered uh rule changes for the MLB we talked about a lot of shit it was a good conversation there's so much that has happened Jake in this offseason and last episode of talking baseball we talked about how holy shit things are happening this is not the same offseason as last season since that episode which dropped Monday we're recording this Tuesday night so much more has already happened we're not going to discuss it at length on this episode but I mean you were just throwing it at me we had Moustakis the Marlins picked up two infielders. There's a lot. Uh, there was even there's even more that I forget. Yeah, I mean the the non tender deadline is now like an event in baseball because yeah. people were running the numbers. Like teams used to be, <laughs> like they felt honored to have their guys on arbitration. They like they needed to have those guys on their team, and now teams are like, wait, I don't know if we could get. Instead of paying our guy $10 million, why don't we get a free agent that we could pay five? And so it's it's really interesting. I'm uh I don't know. I think we're both getting juiced up for, for winter meetings, but I'm I'm interested to hear what like some of the real baseball dudes have to say about it because it's kind of bad, it's kinda of good. Like I feel like a couple players are gonna put themselves in better situations and a couple are gonna get screwed. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know. I texted you today and I was like, I think MLBs are MLB winter meetings are gonna be wild because last year we went and literally guys that weren't following along with us or following winter meetings closely, nothing happened. Jake and I went for the first yeah. time last year. We had a table, we had our mic set up, we did some interviews, we had a lot of fun. But as far as baseball moves nothing happened and they think, they always talk about it like it's so crazy people are running around this just dropped this just dropped no literally news. the the only breaking news which again i and i think you and i have been running this through our heads is like yo i bet winter meeting is pretty cool and something breaks because yes. like basically everyone starts gossiping about the same thing um yeah the you want to know the only news that i believe broke while we were at winter meetings last year i remember yeah the Orioles hired Brandon Hyde. Hell yeah! And it was it was pretty funny because one of my buddies is a is a Orioles reporter, and we were talking to him. He's a young dude. He was kind of our comfort zone, who was legit there. And uh, he's like, "Yeah, the the Orioles told me they're not doing anything." <laughs> we were like, <laughs> we "We're like, we were like, maybe the manager." He's like, "No, I don't even think that." And then they did, so we were busting his balls a little bit. But yeah, last last winter meeting, the story was nothing was happening. That yeah. was the story. So so uh, we're gonna have another episode before winter meeting. So I feel foolish like saying this because we'll be we're gonna have another episode, three episode week from us. Because things yeah. are happening, and I guarantee more happens. So this is Wednesday. You're listening to the Ploof interview. On Friday, we'll drop another one and update everything else that has happened. And then I was going to give a whole winter meeting spiel, but I'll give that on the Friday episode. Just follow us and all that good stuff. You want? Let's just go right into this interview now. Do you think one of the semi-big guys falls between now and 
in Thursday night when we record at this point. See, here's the thing, Jake. Right. The days before winter meetings and even the first couple days of winter meetings, look at this hair I got. What is that? Yeah, you got a you got a wild card hair right now. Oh no, the hair's already turning on you. No, it's just the end of the day. Uh, oh boy. Um fuck. What was I saying? <laughs> You're saying the days leading up to winter meetings and are, the first full of days of winter meetings. are full okay. of nonsense. Are full of like they're like like this latest Ooh. report. This latest report came out that I was like Wheeler says he plans to sign before winter meetings even start. Oh yeah, because leverage much dum dums like that's not a real report. That's someone feeding you something for leverage. Which that's reporters have to report what they hear. Um, but like, there's a lot of hogwash that gets sent out these days before winter meetings. I'm I'm just interested. I mean, everyone's doing their Cole Strasburg meeting. I don't think either of them are going to drop. But, yeah, people are being really serious about Wheeler, Rendon. Um, and I don't know, some of the, like, some some of the back channel stuff we, we have heard is that if, if there's a dude that would sign and doesn't care about when he announces it, it's Rendon. <laughs> so... Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to see, but yeah, we'll, we'll be covering, uh, all the baseball, baseball, baseball transaction stuff next up. Has our dude had any good tweets? Which you gotta tighten that up. That scope for me a little bit. Heyman. Oh, your dude. (laughs) He, uh, he is not, that's that's not my man. Yep. They got one. We got one. Okay. New segment. Oh, yes. This is a new segment on Talking Baseball. It's called Get Stupid with John Heyman. Get stupid. Get stupid. Get stupid. Okay, here's a John Heyman tweet update. Wheeler is White Sox top pitching target. No belief they are in on Cole Strasburg and seem less so on Mad Bum. Also reportedly in on Wheeler. The Twins, the Rangers, the Reds. Maybe the Blue Jays. Maybe the Astros. <laughs> the South Siders could go for two starters. Also could use a second baseman. So <laughs> why We're does down he to think six. why does he think that's a tweetable thing? We're down to six. That's a that one's not one of his more egregious ones. There's gonna be a lot better coming on this segment. Oh, there will be a ton, dude. But like, okay, so this update is I mean, that we've got there's there's no mystery team in that. The tweet. Whites, the White Sox, the uh, Twins, the Rangers, the Reds, maybe the Blue Jays, maybe the Astros. So one, two, three, four, five, six teams. I mean, how many teams are in need of top line starting pitchers? Like you put the Yankees on there and the Angels and you have every team that he could guess. Yeah, his his Wheeler one before that. I mean, it's a it's a fairly legit tweet until the end. He he kills me when he does like open ended ones. He goes White Sox, Twins, Rangers, others in like to me, <laughs> that's more pathetic. Yes, he does it all the time. Like you left in that one, he left a full open door. In others. that one, he gave he gave six options, which that's pretty tight for Heyman. Uh, others, he basically limited to all the MLB teams. Okay, not even he didn't specify. <laughs> Just anyone else. <laughs> Yoma Yuri. <laughs> all right, here is our new best friend in the entire world, Trevor Plouffe. But first, I'm gonna run all the ads, then Trevor Plouffe. <laughs> We have history today. The first guest in talking baseball history, and it is drum roll. I tried; it didn't really work. Drum rolls don't work well on podcasts. Uh, yes. <laughs> Trevor Ploof, the former first round pick of your Minnesota Twins in 2004, debuted in 2010. Little third base shortstop utility, fourth in doubles in 2014. Thank you. <laughs> Led the AL in double plays with 28 in 2015. Wow, <laughs> that's what I'm most known for. <laughs> and then I was, I had Wait, led turned, AL and turn, a- turned or no, grounded, not, into? Not, no. No. grounded into it. No, grounded into it. Grounded into it. Um, I take back so my that's claps. tough. 
Yeah, so no claps for that. And then I had AL errors third base in, in 2012, but we don't have to talk about that because errors are a little overrated. I regret yeah, no, asking I, you to do the intro. I told you I was going to go in. Great. For me, it's okay. <laughs> I actually have explanations for both of those. So, you know, grounding the double plays means you just hit the ball hard just at somebody. Exactly. Okay. Yep. That's how I look at it, actually. But uh, the errors, <laughs> you know, whatever. Whatever. Yeah, yes. You just had better range than the average third baseman. That's all. I wasn't going to say that, but I don't want to make too many excuses for myself right off the bat. But No, it's like our Chapman. Most errors, but he's the best third baseman. So you were actually the best that year. Congrats. It, basically, basically, Chapman and I are the same player. Yes. So we're, player, yeah. we're joined by Matt Chapman. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, Matt, of the Oakland A's. Um, no, dude. Trevor, what's up, man? We're We're buddies. We're buddies. We yeah, we got to hang out in LA a little bit. Got to meet each other, and and here we are, right? Perfect. You're putting our setups to shame, so we're happy about that. You forgot the Yankee yeah. Killer in yeah. my intro. That's what I really wanted you to say. Yeah, Ooh. Yankee Killer, 800 OPS at Yankee Stadium. Did you ever play? No, you didn't. You only played at the new Yankee Stadium. Yeah, yeah, the new one. I debuted in 2010, so I think the new one was it was 09, right? They won the World Series there. Yeah. Thank you for reminding us. It was yeah. a good year. Last one, right? Yeah. Thank you. That that's come on now. Come on now. That's the rumor on Twitter. Yeah. First decade without it. So Jake, you have the most notes I've ever seen you have for an episode here. Yeah. Hit him with one well, random so question. I, yeah, hit me, man. I, I know I, I know Jimmy normally he 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 doesn't like some of this stuff, but it as actually we had our ideal meeting situation. We we linked up with you. Um, in the valley outside of LA, we had a couple beers, um, and that that's like Jimmy's goal of this whole thing. Like, d- please, we could have we could have interviewed some pretty serious people, yeah. But we waited. We wanted to link up with you. We wanted to get your vibe, and you vibed with us, and that was awesome. Um, I want to start with an apology, not for my intro. Uh, you you met up with me and Jimmy, and we had Jimmy's brother Luke, formerly intern Luke, we call him. Now he's producer. Um, Luke. And producer Luke said when he came up and he met you, he said he stepped on your shoe. He feels and he so said, bad about it. He keeps talking about it. I stepped on his shoe. I feel terrible. Oh, my gosh. I honestly do not remember that. And luckily for him, I'm not like a sneaker guy. So Okay. Like, okay. Perfect. So, so Luke, Luke's, like kind, Luke's kind of a young swagster. So he's like, oh, my God, I stepped on his clean shoe. Um so I'm 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 glad I could clear the show because I would have acted you know upset with him or whatever. <laughs> now the cat's out of the bag. I don't really care. So here's my first okay. question. That's completely just a tangent. How many guys in the MLB are like, uh, like brands guys? Like they need the newest stuff. They need the newest hat. Because like in I played hockey and I was couldn't care less growing up. But there was tons of people like need the new stuff. Our MLB clubhouse is full of guys who don't care because they're so good. You said did, did baseball, you equipment? baseball equipment. Like, were you like an equipment hound? Like, needed the new glove, needed the new bats, needed yeah. everything? There's all sorts of guys. You know, I think um, there's the guys that just get sent everything, and so they have everything. There's guys – usually the guys that really want, like, all the cool shit, those are the guys that don't have it, the younger guys or, like, maybe guys that just got called up or guys that don't have the big deals because – you know, then they're like, man, I see so-and-so. And, you know, Jake Garrietta is probably the, the – the person I saw got sent the most shit. Like we come home from road trips and his entire locker and his extra locker next to him would just be like boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff. So for a guy like that, like he doesn't really care. He kind of just like opens up a box and is like, Oh, where are these today? Um, it's a nice life. I was pretty much like, I liked whatever I had. That was like a creature of habit. So I wore the same shoes from Under Armour. They were called the yard ones. And I think they're like on yard 11 now. So I like always requested the yard ones. So I was a guy that, wanted what I was comfortable with, I guess. But definitely you have all those guys. Um, like I said, most of the time they're the young guys that like want all the cool shit. They want to be like flashy. And then if they suck, we always would just make fun of them. Be like, you have all that cool gear on and you suck. So, so it's like little, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. how it is in little league as well. Kid shows. It doesn't like change. It doesn't change. Yeah. yeah. Were you, uh, how many gloves did yeah. you go through during the season? Uh, same man. I would just, I had my one glove that I loved and I would constantly try to break in like new gloves, but you know, for whatever reason, and I think a lot of guys will probably share the sentiment with me. Like you'll get, we get, I think I got sent like five gloves a year from Rawlings or something like that. And you get one or two that would break in like the way you wanted them. 
And then the other three, like I have like sitting right over here, I have maybe four or five gloves that I haven't even caught a baseball with. So uh, I had a lot of time with my one glove, molded it perfectly. And even though I did lead the league in, in errors, it was still, in my opinion, a pretty good. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's, uh, I always like that's, tough, tough, that's a tough, a tough break. break. I always like when the guy wears the same hat, like John Wetland on the Yankees in the 90s wore the same hat the entire season. And by the end of the year, it was just disgusting and gross. And I was like, that's cool. But I can understand why you wouldn't want to do that. But I, yeah, also, I was not like that. Like my, give me like a clean cup and sliders and all that like nasty stuff. Like I, I needed that like fresh, like, like my cleats, you know, whatever. If they felt good to me, I was, I'm going to stick with them, but um, needed that new hat, new cup, all that stuff. Yeah. I we was, are hard opposites on that. I was neighbors with John Valentine growing up and he hit the first grand slam ever in, in interleague play. And they took his bat away from him. And his dad was like, he was really upset about it. They put it in the Hall of Fame, but he was like, I was on a hot streak with that bat. And they fucking made me give it away. <laughs> he was really upset about it. Uh, I always thought that shit was interesting. Yeah, I think that's like when people come into the clubhouse and um, you'll take them back to the equipment room and they'll just go with the equipment guy and he'll just be handing out shirt after shirt of pants and shorts and everything you can think of. And these guys, like their eyes are so wide. And as you, you know, play play ball for a while you kind of get used to it so you forget like how special it is like now i have so much extra crap like i'll bring it to my high school and just unload a bunch of like pairs of batting gloves and the joy <laughs> on these baseball players faces it's amazing dude you know stuff that stuff that big leaguers take for granted you know and you really have to remember where you came from like i never used batting gloves coming up because they were too expensive and they, they would just get ruined so i didn't even wear batting gloves until i got into pro ball Damn. and now now like <laughs> if I get a speck of dirt uh, on my bag, those they're gone. Like I need that. <laughs> yes. yes. I got to have that grip, like, that grip right. So um, definitely funny to like see everyone's interactions or, and reactions to um, all the gear that everyone gets. It's pretty funny, man. So I so, have a question. One question that I didn't write down. I'm snaking it from you, Jake, because it's a weird question. It. It's pretty open. How'd you get good at baseball? Like you said, Ooh. growing up, like, do, were, are you, is your dad a ball player? Do you have older brothers who like were hard on you? Did you, it was it a group of friends? It what, was, what, tell me what I play. didn't have growing up. Okay. I, honestly, I think the biggest thing was my older brother. Okay. So he played, my dad played baseball in high school. Uh, it was pretty good. I had an uncle that was okay. Um, but again, only high school. I think my uncle played um, like uh, junior college ball, but they just started working uh right when they got out of high school but i had an older brother he played baseball he was good at it and i'm four years younger than him so it was like my entire childhood he just tried to keep up with them you know and for the most part i got my ass beat you know yeah. and then you get a little bit older start to get a little bit better and then it's like okay i can i can beat him every once in a while and just that like him pushing me even though he probably didn't mean to like he did though because he yeah. here he is i'm watching him He's doing well, and I just wanted to be exactly like him. So I think that's a big thing. I tell people all the time, like, your second son is most likely going to be better than your first son just because of that, that, that pushing, that motivation. This is the exact answer I was looking for as the first son. So <laughs> thank you very <laughs> much. You Jake doesn't have any older brothers, so yeah, Jake, we my, are my parents. For, my parents' first son was awful. Um, <laughs> I, I hate, I hate that, guy. that guy. Trevor, I, I think before, before we start deep diving into thing, I think we, we still got a couple just like backstory boxes we want to check. And I, I think we can hit a couple of these quick. A, do you, so first I'm going to go baseball reference on you. Um, six, two, two, 15. Was that playing weight? Are you still there? What do you got? Well, baseball reference and, and probably I guess all the teams, they usually give guys an extra inch. So I want to like correct that for the masses. I'm six one. I don't want to be out here like Same. people thinking I'm six two and then they're disappointed when I show up. So yeah. my mom tried to do that for me on my license. <laughs> she was like, just make it say five eight. And I was like, Mom, I don't give a shit. I'm short. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Like I wanted to be like a beast, like on like the Jumbotron. Like show me like six four. <laughs> Yes. Which a lot of a lot of teams do. You gotta watch these people, man. But uh six one, I played mostly at like two ten, you know, but now after I don't I don't lift the same way I used to lift, I don't eat the same way I used to eat, so I'm probably down to like one ninety five right now. Okay. A lean Friday machine, you know? 
Same. I get Same. that. Um, okay. And then this is a big one for me and Jim, because this is a big part of baseball life. Do you have nicknames? Because, I mean, Ploof is an awesome last name. I mean, that's fun, rolls off the tongue. On Baseball Reference, they've got Special T. I was running through my head. I mean, TP, I, I, I don't know. Is there? What are we missing nickname-wise? Because you're, I mean, you're a part of the family now. Well, also, but Ploof is very close to Poof, which is a very, <laughs> a very derogatory term in the UK. If you, went to, really? if you went to London on the London games, they'd have a, a jolly old time. Yeah, a puff, a poof. It's, is uh, that like, what is that? It's uh, derogatory. Do you want to go into it or what? It's, for, it's what they call gay people when they're being mean. Oh, you know what? I have heard that before. Yeah, no. Luckily, I mean, that hasn't come to me in the States, but I mean, my name's been butchered so many times. I mean, Ploof is like the last thing people say. It's like, you know, Plouf, Plouffe, whatever. I think it's too easy. It's like, this can't just be Ploof. It's got to be something different. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like just Ploof, you know? Yeah, there's a but, U in there. Uh, there's a U, a couple Fs, you know, people get it. They get scared about by the E at the end. So, like I said, it's been butcher. But yeah, special T was like, I mean, they ask you for like those nicknames on the players' weekend jerseys. They're like, hey, give us right. a nickname. Like, I literally do not have a nickname. Ploofy, Trev, TP, like that's like the standard. But I was in a biker gang growing up. So, okay. yeah, check it out. So that was my biker name, <laughs> gang name. Specialty. So specialty. I want that as like an homage to uh, my my history there, but really no one calls me that. So you can call me it. I mean, we can start it up. Do most guys just call you Ploof? <laughs> Trev, Ploofy, Ploof. Ploofy. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Jake's yeah, got a lot like of Martin nicknames. Harris thing. Ploofy. That was like big Minnesota thing for me. So Ploofy. Jake's got yeah. Rocky, Flying Salami, yeah. Toilet Nostradamus. <laughs> he fell off his toilet and hit his head on the floor <laughs> and then he got his next he get next five uh bets of the day correct toilet <laughs> is it a real fucking story yeah well, dude yeah. we did this daily radio show last off season and he would give his bet of the day every day <laughs> and one day he showed up and he had a bruise on his head <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry 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 jake and he was shitting his brains out because he was sick and like lost all fluids and he <laughs> He passed out on the tr- yeah, he I did a nosedive, the- bro. That's awesome. Uh, nosedive. It was uh, <laughs> enough about me. Toilet Nostradamus? Yeah, the Toilet Nostradamus. <laughs> it's a pretty good nickname. Okay. I'll take it. Do <laughs> uh, you yeah. want actually call you, though? Because, like, you know, nicknames, you can just make anything up. Like, people do so much stupid crap on the back of their players weekend jerseys like yeah no you got yonder alonzo and john jay they're like mr 305 like nobody is ever going to call you mr 305 yeah. like ever you know it's like a joke but no one's really going to call you that and then you have the guys like we're talking about chapman before i think his on the back was chappy and that's yeah. perfect that's actually what people call him i love baseball reference needs to differentiate because they give you nicknames like like rocket for Roger Clemens, Boomer for David Wells. People actually called them those things in passing. And then you have like the human rain delay. Like no one like saw him in the hallway and was like, yo, human rain delay, what's up? <laughs> Who's human rain delay? Give me that one. Uh, oil can. I, like an axle? axle? No, no. Yeah. I feel like Steve a, lot of, Traxel. a lot of people that a lot of pitchers are, have that nickname. Yeah. Steve Traxel is the one, right? Mike Pelfrey we used to call that. He was the worst took forever between his pitches so how much has that changed want- as an infielder like Sonny gray take took forever when he was on the yankees and they had so many errors behind him and we always wondered like is there a correlation there like do infielders legitimately get so bored when the pitcher's taking forever and does it like make your mind stray is there anything to that absolutely absolutely like you'll be out there and this guy's taking forever and, and literally instead of being like all right like one two count like uh, catch your setup outside, probably off speed, and you're gonna I'll go to the hole or to the line, whatever. You're like, this motherfucker, like, can he just <laughs> throw the ball? <laughs> you know, so yeah, your mind strays, and all of a sudden, you know, you have your uh, 28 errors and you uh, lead the league. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> so, so I don't think it was 28. Hold on. <laughs> grab and grow, grab and throw pitchers like Mark Burley or uh, Lance Lance Lynn. Like those guys really actually help. Like the team is like, this is better for us. Yeah, you hear that all the time. I mean, it's like guys are like, this guy, we love playing defense behind them. 
and it's true. It's like, here we go. Like, you know, he's going to throw strikes. So like the action's coming, uh, you know, he's going to be on the mound. He's not like walking around, like wiping his sweat off, whatever, like that helps a ton. So, um, you know, there's the kind of, you know, you guys are used to like those long ass games watching the Yankees and the Red Sox. Yeah. Those were, those are miserable games. Like, <laughs> give me the two hour 20 all day, you know? The Yankees, you Red Sox. I mean, what's what's the average time on those? Three and a half? Like, yeah, I was gonna say three forty. It depends on who's umping. Yeah. If it's Sunday night baseball and Joe West is umping, it's probably like four hours. Yeah, that's horrible, man. It's bad baseball. Do you have an ump you hate the most? Um, I mean, not really. Like, they're 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 all pretty bad. I try to like, you know, I like some. I like some. How that? I all hate right, most. Okay, okay. And I have a few that I like. It's probably better that I tell you ones the ones that I like. Yeah, um, Pat Barrett. It's amazing. Okay, I think everyone likes him. Do you guys like know his background story? He's like spar with Mike Tyson. What? Like, no. Yeah. Didn't he, he he called he called someone's no hitter a perfect game, and they they tell the story about it. And yeah, I, I've I've heard that he's like a badass dude. Stud. Like he's a guy that like he just sticks to his strike zone. So I remember one game in particular. Uh, we were facing David Price at the Trop, and he just kept throwing a two seamer, like a front door two seamer. And so it starts off the plate and it was like coming back, but not enough. And Ted was calling them balls and you can just see David Price. Being like, okay, I'm just going to keep going there. Like he's going to give it to me. I'm David Price. And boom, he just kept hitting the glove, hitting the glove, hitting the glove. And he would not waver. And it was, that's what you want. Just give me the zone. Don't change because this guy is all of a sudden hitting the spot a bunch. Uh, but he's great. Um, you know, obviously most people just don't like, the Joe West, Amy Buckner's, Angel Hernandez of the world because they're just bad at their job. <laughs> There's yeah. really no other explanation for it. I mean, they're nice guys. I think with um with umpiring and driver's licenses, when you hit a certain age, you should retake the test. Like th- Bro, these talk about this all the time. <laughs> like my grandma, she was like 87 years old, and I love her. She ends every episode and she watches games with me. So don't take this wrong. She shouldn't have been on the road for the last five years. She was on the road. Just it should not have been legal. And the same with like Joe West. Dude, Joe West has been umpiring for almost 40 years. Like at some point we should retake. He should have to retake the umpiring test. Yeah, is there an umpiring test? You have to retake a test. I mean, it's-, <clears throat> it's pretty crazy. I read a book about the process and it's Mark Feinstein dad, John Feinstein wrote a book about it. And it's pretty nuts like to graduate to the MLB. But I think once you're there, you're in and they get their Q score after every game and it tells them how many curls they got correct or, or, or wrong. And when they implemented that is when the strike zone actually became real. Cause have you ever seen like Levon Hernandez's perfect game? Oh my gosh. So bad. <clears throat> and, um, <laughs> well, I'm blanking on his name. Cubs who, who struck out 18 guys. Prior. Prior. Carrie Wood. Carrie, Carrie Wood. Wood. Carrie Wood's strikeout game. Like go watch that. <laughs> like they're just not even close to the plate and umps just call it up. There's a documentary and the umps like, yeah, if he hit his spot, we used to just call, call it a strike. That was how the game was umped. So they changed it off. Crazy. They have, like I said, most guys are nice guys. They want to be good umpires. So you kind of like, you're like, all right, like it's, it's just a kind of a hard job, especially like in real time like that, calling balls and strikes. So you kind of give them the benefit of the doubt, but then there are some guys that are just egregious with it. And then if you question them at all, they got some lit back to you or they don't want to hear it from you. Those are the guys we were just like, dude, come on. Like, yeah. this is really affecting my career. You know, let's, can we at least have a conversation about it? And, um, I'm trying to think, you asked me the question, who do I hate the most? And I've, I've, I've come up with one. Okay. I really, okay. I really feel bad. saying. <laughs> you don't have to say it if you don't want to. Uh, Greg Gibson, Greg Gibson, your name. Okay. And I know I never even heard of him. Well, I heard of Ted Barrett. Oh, <laughs> Oh, I know Gibson. Just does not like if you say anything to him, it's just like he you're wrong, he's right, no matter what. And that's that's the stuff that I don't like. You know, it's yeah, yeah. let's at least have a conversation, buddy. Do you ever get tossed? Um, not not in a big league game, which is really soft. good. Yeah. I know. I dude, I want to pay that fine. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, that's I, true. honestly, I I don't really think I ever had like Eric Cooper could have, or you know, RIP Eric Cooper. He could have, he could have thrown me out a couple of times. Him and I had some back and forth early on in my career. He had an awesome accent. He could have thrown me out like the first time, like I was like a rookie or first year in. We had some words, and I, I, I expected him to throw me out, and he didn't. And then for a while we were kind of iffy, but then we made up and play. I mean, playing third base, man, it's like 
you hang out with that guy. It's tough because yeah, you you know, you get the umpires at home and the next day they're there. So it's like you gotta be ready to talk to them. So that's kind of, that's probably why I was I didn't get thrown out too much because I knew I had to deal with them the next day and I didn't you know, I'm kind of a not like an aggressive person per se. So nice. Yeah. I did I've uh, got one. I I, I I didn't write this down. I wanted to ask normally you hear this with football players a lot, but uh, we used to be in a pretty geeky fantasy baseball league. Okay. Do you have a good or bad relationship with fantasy baseball? Because you got something going on. You're I still mean, you were league, like Jake. a power power hitting infielder, and you had the shortstop eligibility going on. Uh, did you have good experience with that, bad experience with that? Do you hate when people mention their fantasy team to you? Honestly, I didn't get it mentioned too often to me. Um, I, I don't know if I was on a ton of people's fantasy teams, to be honest. Oh, you were on you were on my pot, my my team, baby. I, I hear the only ones I've ever heard people are like, "Hey, thanks, you did this for me." Like, you, I picked you up off waivers, and you were pretty good. For <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, that's not bad. <laughs> Streamed you for a week, and you crushed it. Yeah, like hey, like I saw your power surge, and you held me for a couple weeks, and then after that, I dropped you back to waivers. So. Do you- well, and where where I was going to segue that was, and I thought this was a really fun question, and you might you might have some real ones that might have been passed to you through the years, but I was going to say, if if someone wasn't familiar with you, they're new to baseball, they didn't know Trevor Plouffe's game, I wanted you to give a scouting report on yourself, slash, have you ever received any scouting reports, and you were like, oh shit, th- what is this? <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, I definitely have received the scouting reports uh, playing on different teams. And then it's funny to hear guys come over like pitchers and they're like, Oh yeah, this is how we used to attack you. And it's, it's always the same shit with me. It was, it was uh, expand the zone in to set up pitches away late. So like hard in soft away, which is a pretty standard yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> scouting report, you know, mine was uh, just throw the ball. Just throw, just yeah. throw, it, up. Just throw it anywhere near him. <laughs> But uh, people thought like they could get in on my uh, on my hands a lot, so um, and they could, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so if they got me to expand the zone, get me cheating in. They start throwing that spot stuff away. So they, my best years are when I really was laying off that and then using the whole field going the other way. But uh, it's hard to do that, man. It's hard to stay disciplined like that. I uh, I make the breakdown videos on weird plays and ejections and all that shit. If they're one from your career that you're like, ah, oh, that would have been, that was a weird, weird play. Cause I know we have the, you have two home runs off two position pitchers. Maybe I'll make that anyway. I told you to make your Twitter bio that best ever against position players. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah Minimum I, two at bats. <laughs> best hitter ever against position players. And then my other claim to fame is uh, hottest wife while I was in the show. Wow. Wow. I mean, yeah, I did. Was that a was that a one person vote? I, I got that vote from like four or five guys. I have a go. funny story. Uh, <laughs> the reason I say that, uh, I I actually mean it. But uh, Logan Morrison, I get over to the Rays, and I'm playing uh, with him, and he's like, "Hey, man, like, just want to let you know, like, big fan of yours." I'm like, "You're a big fan of mine? Like, why?" And he goes, "Well, we used to have our uh, our hitters meetings." And um, we'd go over our defensive meetings, excuse me. They go over our defensive meetings, like, okay, uh, Trevor Plouffe. And apparently their video guy used to, like, kind of uh, check out uh, the stands. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they, 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 they'd they seen my wife. So every time they would uh, game plan against me, it'd be like, Trevor Plouffe and someone would yell, hot wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you Google your name, everyone's Googling pictures of your wife right now that's watching this or listening to this. Yeah. When you Google your name, yeah, check the, her out. The top, <laughs> the top drop down is Trevor Plouffe Twitter, Trevor Plouffe wife. So yeah, there you go. It's, it's true. I, I'm proud of it. So you know, okay, I'm, it's okay saying that. But yeah, I love the. I would love to break down the the Kike Hernandez. Well, and that was a lot of fun because he was doing you you. I think you broke that down like maybe he was when he was doing like the hip gyrations and shit. Kike, yeah, he does a lot of weird stuff. He's a fun. He's a fun guy. He was the one. Uh, Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So he got on the mound, was doing like the hip gyrations. It was like having a lot of fun with it. So that's like a fun thing to break down. In that same play, you could probably find Gabe Kapler like in the dugout, just like 
just going like this, like, thank, like praying and saying, thank you, Lord, they're bringing a position player in. Uh, <laughs> a lot of funny stuff from that, yeah. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a tied game, like 16th inning or something, and they bring in uh, Kike Hernandez to pitch, and he walked the first two batters, and then he had two strikes on you. And then it was like a high fastball you put oppo for the walk-off home run. How do you celebrate that? When you're rounding the bases, are you like, am I allowed to go crazy? Am I not allowed to go crazy? Like, that's a hard one to celebrate. Yeah, I don't know, how, I don't know what the rules are on that one. I was pretty stoked, but, you know, I was trying to play it cool, I guess. You know, but uh, it was also like two in the morning or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Like really late. <laughs> I was actually, I was like pumped that we got to go nah, home. Let's go home. That's always, I have fun breaking down when people win on walk-off box or walk-off walks. Or there was one against the A's walk-off error, and it's so fun to break down the awkward celebration because they're like, well, we have to do the Gatorade, but then they're like, well, we can't get too into this. I think I had like a walk-off. I might have been against the Yankees, actually. Oh, I hit a swinging bunt to someone pitching, and he like overthrew the first baseman, and we won. So that was a very awkward um, celebration for me, you know, because you want to get a hit. <laughs> That's You're my highlight, highlight reel. reel. That's, That's my, my career, career highlight, highlight reel. reel. <laughs> you want to hit a homer, you want to do something, and all of a sudden you hit like a swinging bun. You're like running down the first base, pissed off, and then he throws the ball away, and you have to turn, you know, turn your frown upside down real quick, and then you know, yeah, all the cameras are on you. It's very, it is very awkward. Man. There's a great old highlight of Paul O'Neill who. Thought he flied out to right field in old Yankee Stadium, and he like slams the bat down, and he's fucking pissed, and it ends up carrying over the short porch for a, a go ahead home run in like the eighth inning, and he rounds home, and he everyone's trying to celebrate with him, but he didn't get good wood on it, so he's still just <laughs> livid the entire like he can't get himself to understand like just be happy. It's really funny. Funny man, I think I mean Bryce Harper's done that a few times, hasn't he? Yeah, I think so. And then people take it. Uh, p- people take it. People love to hate on him. So they're like, what a dick. But like with Paul O'Neill, we're like, well, that's so awesome. It's funny how people can do the same thing but get perceived different. Jake and I like Harper. We think I like people that play play the heel. Like Harper's not afraid to be hated. Neither is Bregman. And I don't really like Bregman, but I I like that he does that. You know, baseball needs people that are going to be like villains. I like Votto a lot because he'll fuck with opposing fans in uh, when he's playing first. And uh, yeah, Who are the villains? I mean, you're saying Bryce Harper. I guess he's definitely a villain. People love to hit him. You're right. I don't know why. Like, I guess even I have some preconceived notions of him, but he he's, was a pretty good guy. I met him in spring training this year like when he came over. That was cool. Uh, I'm trying to think of other villains. Strowman's like a villain, right? Kind of. Yeah, Archer before he kind of got bad enough where no one no, cares no anymore. one's no one's scared of archer no. but but he <laughs> no it's scared of but dislike just because he's it's mostly guys that are 100 percent themselves on the field good or bad like mm. tim anderson right now everyone loves to hate that guy he's, he's my, my best friend, friend because he retweeted my video i made on him so me me and timmy are close actually i so i like everything the white Sox are doing right now they're kind of yeah he's a good player man I, you see that a lot. Like you'll, you'll see guys that are on other teams, and you're like, "Oh, I hate that guy. Like I can't stand him." And then he comes on your team, you're like, "Oh, okay, he's all right." Yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously we're Yankees fans, but you hear that about Derek Jeter, and all oh, everything I read is like, <clears throat> guys would come over and be like, "Oh, he's overrated. He's overhyped. He gets too much attention." Then they'd spend a season with Jeter, and they always came out of it like, "Holy shit, that dude works really hard." So I don't know. Maybe you've heard some other stories that are differing that, but it's always cool. Like. It's anyone who gets publicity. I'm sure people, I don't know. You think anyone hates Trout? Like within, like players are like, fuck that guy. Because he seems liked by I'm everyone. Sure, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some people that hate him. There's always haters. But, uh, you know, he's kind of like one of those guys who does, he just stays out of the limelight. So he doesn't give himself like opportunities to be hated. The only thing you could really hate about him is just like how good he is. So. You know, he's kind of got that going for him. But I agree, you know, the other guys, you know, the Bregmans and um, Strowmans, the Archers, those guys kind of, they, they leave it out all in the field, so they, they leave themselves opportunities for that. But um, I like those guys. Are you into, like, this youth movement where, you know, hey, let them bat flip, let them show emotion and all that? Would you have been up in your bat flips if you were, you know, because 2013-14, you played 
kind of an era where it was slowly transitioning to where I feel like the last two years have been the league saying like, no, let's do it. Like, let's allow this to happen. Would you have liked it or disliked it? Would you have partaken or did you? I, uh, I'm all about it because I think it's a way to grow the game. I think that's kind of what the MLB is seeing. It's like people want to see that stuff. So now that I'm out of the game, I kind of understand it more. But I was brought up or mentored by like a couple guys who would never do that. Like Justin Morneau, Joe Maurer, uh, Jim Tomei. Like these guys are just not going to. Yep. Yeah. Watching these guys with their pedigree and they're not doing it. It's like you just you automatically just say, okay, I'm not doing it either. Like I'm going to act like I've been there, even though I necessarily haven't uh, been there. But um, you, like you said, now it's it's par for the course. And even the older guys, like the bronze of the world, like they're like I, I saw him absolutely pimp a bunch of balls this year, and he never would have done that in years past. But now it's kind of like commonplace. So yeah. I, I'm okay with it. That's fun. Uh... I, I think it's funny, uh, going back to the heel thing a little bit, I think like baseball players don't get enough exposure to be the heel. It's not like, oh, Jake Lamb's coming to town. That guy pisses me off. Like, no, not enough guys are watching those D-back games. Um, and I, I, I think we're getting into the current players a little bit. And, and Trevor, we, we kind of heard this about you, and then um, you you got a FaceTime while we grab beers with, with someone who's gaining popularity in baseball. But you're still pretty well connected to the game. I mean... Is it, are, are you still at the level where, I mean, you're just rooting for your buddies, you're rooting for the, the California guys, or I, I don't know, I think you're trying to do some sports media stuff, are you, like, where are you at with baseball fandom or watching the games? Right now, with baseball fandom, I'm rooting for my buddies. I think that's yeah. the number one thing. I don't necessarily have a team that I'm rooting for anymore. Um, I'm partial to the Twins because... So uh, most of my baseball relationships are there, but um, I don't I don't necessarily care if they win. Like I, when they got smoked by the Yankees, I wasn't like, oh, you know, dang it, you know, I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, you know, I, I I think I think everybody did. <laughs> I made my my postseason picks and I picked the Twins just as like a fan appeasing pick. I was like, this is stupid. They're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> you got to you got to pander a little bit. I know you do. And, but so, yeah, I'm rooting for my buddies. And even then it's funny, like some of these guys will face each other, like, uh, uh, Flaherty, who, who, um, was the FaceTime you're talking about. He was, he faced Max Fried in, in a playoff game. It's like hilarious to see that happen. Um, so I, I just love watching the game without any allegiances. I think that's kind of like the way to do it. Like these playoffs, it was like, I don't care who wins. Like, I just want to see good baseball and I want to see these games. And, and you're kind of like happy either way. Like if, if you know the Astros would have pulled it out, like I wouldn't have cared. Obviously, now it's a little different from what we've learned, but um, it's it's kind of fun to watch this watch the games with no allegiances. Because basketball, I have a team. Uh, football, I have a team. College football, I have a team. And baseball, I'm just I'm wide open. I think it's it's been the most fun I've ever had. Like you know, enjoying the sport. Yeah, you can talk easily about it, which I found because <clears throat> I was we were covering you know all of Major League Baseball this year for the first time where I would always watch the the World Series and stuff, but I never was sharing my thoughts. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I can make jokes at both teams. I can celebrate. And then I found out that everyone thinks you're rooting for the other team no matter what. You, I got Joe Buck syndrome happened to me. Sucked. <laughs> but now now you're right. Like Now I'm glad the Nationals won. I have uh, – I have. Uh, what do you change when you change history? What's that called, Jake? There's Tough a term. Bro. Asking me for words? Yeah, there's a term when you change history. I'm borderline fuck. literate. Yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, but I do fuck. know that you're not allowed in the state of Texas anymore, or at least the city. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that right? They're mad. They're mad. They probably were watching this video uh, saying, get to the Astro stuff. I want to hear what he says and then misinterpret it and then be mad at him. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to join you with the band from Houston. Yeah, let's let's get into it. First opening question, if you were on the 2017 Astros, what would your slash line have been? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, we kind of talked about this before. Like, you, you just can't quantify how much knowing what pitch is coming helps you. You know, so and I know we've done, like, the, the home and away splits, and some of them are good, some of them aren't that good, which I don't really understand. Um all we can, all I can think of is a lot of the guys. Maybe there were times where they wanted it, times they didn't want it, because that does happen. Sometimes you'd be like, "Yeah, give me that pitch. I want to know everything." And then there's some guys you face like, "I don't need it." You know, so uh, it would 
better than uh, my 2018 slash line that I actually had because that was probably the worst year of baseball I've ever played. I have it up here, but I wasn't going to read it because, yeah, it's... it's it's really bad. It was a, it was going to be a bounce back year for me. And then I didn't bounce back. You so forgot I forgot to bounce stay. back. Yeah. So, yeah. I forgot <laughs> that part. So we'll add a hundred points to every, every line. If you were on the 2007. Yeah. I like that. It still wouldn't have been that good. I don't even know what happened, man. I can't tell you. It wouldn't be that. Like, still that would be pretty good. good. I mean, two, seven, two ninety eight, three seventy two. That's pretty good. Don't, don't, don't even go into it. Yeah, now people are <laughs> subtracting the 100. Let's not. Um, it's funny. Well, look, that, that year was fucked. I, you know, I went to the A's. It was going to be the third baseman starting, and I don't know what happened, man. I just couldn't find my stroke, dude. And then I went to the Tampa, and I kept telling the hitting coach, fix me. Like, something is going <laughs> on with my brain. Like, help me. And he'd be like, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. You get more bats. Well... I'm not getting any bats. My swing sucks. Like you, like something has to happen, and uh, just <laughs> it just never did, man. So we joked when we yeah. were together, and I said you spent 2017 playing uh, at the Coliseum and then playing at the Trop, <laughs> two worst places in the MLB. Was maybe let's blame that your environment sucked. I agree. I, I I'll blame anything besides myself. You know, <laughs> was definitely wasn't me. What was worse, the Trop or Oakland? From a player perspective, everyone knows what it's like to view it on TV. I think Coliseum's not that bad. The trap, I fucking hate. But from a player's perspective, like the clubhouse, behind the scenes. Uh, I, I, Oakland, Oakland's, Oakland's the worst. Um, and the guys do a really good job in the clubhouse. So I don't want to like talk shit about them. But they can only do so much. You know, It's like putting lipstick on a pig. You know, you just, there's not much you can do with that stadium. And the trop, at least you had the good weather, you know, in Oakland, it's, it was freezing cold all the time, even during the summer. And um, the trop was like, you know, 71 degrees every, every day. So at first I liked the trop. It was like, like, a, like a nice little change. You got the, the dome. It was like you're playing in a different galaxy. And then you start to realize like, wow, like vi- I'm vitamin D deficient or something is going on because <laughs> I'm showing up to the field and I just feel like crap. And, uh, like you said, like I played at the two worst places. Maybe we can start. I'm going to start telling people that's what happened to my baseball career. Yeah, there you go. There's uh, a, yeah, li- li- there you go. Li- You're lucky you were playing pig and lipstick on a pig and coach fix my swing. I mean, I'm it's sophomore year in high school all over again for me. Um, I pleaded, I pleaded with them, man. But the time before, I was like, come on, dude, like, please, like. Like, let's work on something. He's like, your swing looks great. I'm like, dude, I know it doesn't fucking look great. It's <laughs> something. <laughs> but uh, you know, it didn't happen for me. So it's okay. Damn. Yeah. All right, we got to get back to we got to get back to the Astros. Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah. No, it's all good. Um, the Astros cheated. The banging is real, and all the other stuff for you Astros fans. I don't think it's proven yet. I don't think the whistles are proven. I don't think the eyeliner, the buzzers, they're all just rumors, and maybe they didn't happen. But the banging in 2017 is very real. It was banging before pitches, and <clears throat> the only reason you would bang to let a batter know the pitch is because of cameras, right? Is that like, is there any way that the banging would make sense without cameras? They wouldn't need it. Right. It's just, it's, it was too often and, and too quick for it to be from a generic regular old, I have a tip on you uh, type thing because, you know, it was going from pitcher to pitcher and it was so accurate happen unless you're literally looking at the signs so we know that that's real that's like you can't even if there's any astros fans out there that are still questioning if they cheated and stole signs in 2017s and banged on trash can you're delusional like that happens like that's 100 percent true so we'll see what happens with that the other stuff i thought you said the whistling was proven I, you know i read some articles on that you can kind of get the sound yes. here and there, but it's, it's the definitive proof is the banging yeah, th- now they're saying like they were changing the whistling and then there's that charge whistle and a lot of Astros fans said like, no, that dude's a staple in the stadium. Like the broadcast asked him to be quiet. So I- I'm backpedaling a little on the whistling, even though I never was that too deep. I thought for sure it's something. I think the Yankees heard it and they were going into Houston like listening, like active ears, like let's figure out what they're doing. So, But the banging's real. And, and then uh, logically, just like deductive reasoning, if you win the World Series – with the method in place and you think the rest of the league is doing stuff like this as well. 
well, you're not going to just morally be like, okay, we're done. <laughs> you're going to change the relay system. So you know, their culture, you know, has guided them into this type of uh, mindset, you know, like it starts from up top. You know, we saw the email that came out uh, asking the scouts and the advanced scouts to do whatever they could to, to get signed. So it was, it was coming from the top leaking down to the players. And like you said, you, you start to have success with something. Maybe you start to rely on it. And then all of a sudden it just becomes commonplace and you go from there. So I went to, I went to, I went to Houston twice in 2000. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'd have to look this up, but I'm pretty sure I went there with both Oakland and Tampa. And I do not remember the banging, which now when you go back and look at the games, it seems like, how could you not hear that? Yeah. So I, I wanted to ask you, because this is something that me me and Jim haven't been fully able to wrap our heads around. And uh, we don't know if we're giving too much respect or not enough. But when we thought about this and we thought about the Houston Astros and the players, like it, we're baseball dudes. Like, I, I don't know. There's there's something that hurts your soul when you actually hear they were using the cameras and stuff like that. Like, that's so not baseball. It it hurts. Um, and we were thinking about some of we were thinking about the guys in the Houston organization and it it really was all these young guys that came up through Houston or like, uh, you know, Guriel that Houston's his only team he knew. And, you know, you go through the main guys, Springer, Altuve, Bregman, et cetera, et cetera, that we, we've kind of give them a little bit of a pass just because like, hey, if this is all, you know, this is all, you know, um, so I. Uh, I mean, is is that where people should be thinking, or do you think these guys kind of need to be thrown in front of the bus a little more? I, I see what you're saying there. Like, you know, you're oh hey there. Uh, I see what you're saying. Um, when you come up, you're a young guy. Like, you're gonna listen to who the older guys are, no matter what. Like, you know, the Astros. A lot of these teams now they're letting the young guys, you know, hit in the middle of the lineup. They're letting them kind of do a lot of things that maybe necessarily didn't happen. You know, even five, six, seven years ago, uh, where it was mostly veterans making all these decisions. So, like, there are teams that do that. But I'm telling you right now, there's no way that one of those guys, those young guys, came in and, and said, like, let's implement this. It was yeah. definitely an older guy. And I think the reports have been have been saying that as well. We, I don't want – you can't really necessarily name a name uh, of who it was. But, you know, in my thinking, if I came – and, uh, you know, Justin Morneau or a Josh Willingham type figure for me, it was like, hey, this is what we're doing. I got to be honest with you, man. I probably would have bought into it. And it's just because they're they're essentially the boss, you know, like these older guys on the team that you listen to those guys, you know, you're going to do whatever they tell you to do, especially your first couple of years. You know, you start to get your identity a little bit later in your career, but um so it's I, I do see what see where you're coming from, um, but uh, it's definitely still there's still fault there. You know they're not they're not just like hey like those guys didn't have anything to do with it because they're young guys. Like they still went along with it, and um, we knew definitely know what happened in 2017. We don't know about 2018, and 19 definitively, but you gotta you gotta let them you know wear some of the responsibility as well. Yeah, we we. Uh... I heard some people say this to me and it's on the same thing. Like maybe like these guys actually thought everyone was doing it to this extent. And a lot of Astro fans are saying, we're not the only ones that do are doing this. And a lot of the report has said, you know, they're not the only team doing this as well, which I believe to an extent, because why are all the fingers being pointed at the Astros? If there's more teams that are doing it to this extent, I, this is honestly just my opinion. I think maybe these younger guys did think, Hey, this is league wide. Like we're if we're just trying to do it better than everyone else. So, do you think this is league wide? Like I know that teams go to lengths to steal signs. We've seen it with the Red Sox with the iPad that was Cora after he left the Astros. There was something interesting there. <laughs> the Yankees got fined for misusing their bullpen phone, which every Astro fan has sent me my way. But they didn't use it to steal signs. They just fucking misused the bullpen phone. Is this rampant? Do you think every team is like trying to this extent, top-down operation? I think teams are trying to do whatever they can to 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 pick up on either the catcher sequences, um, you know, kind of like the regular stuff, like what pitchers are doing, where they're coming set, and whatnot. I do not think that there is, are multiple teams using cameras, uh, like a live feed direct to somebody relaying signs. I don't think that's league wide. Is it just the Astros? Obviously, you can't say that definitively, 
But uh, I've now played in, let's see, you know, five organizations, and that's never even come up. So I had a I had a scout reach out to me when that email leaked, and he was like, "Dude, I've been a scout for twenty years. Uh, I'm with." He gave me this team and proved he was a scout, but <clears throat> he asked me to stay quiet. But he was like, "That email is fucking crazy. That is not normal to ask scouts." to help install cameras or binoculars. Scouts are old school. Yeah. Scouts do not want any part of that, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. You can argue that the, the new age type of front offices, the guys, I don't want to, you know, categorize guys just as Ivy leaguers, but you know, those kind of front offices coming in, you know, you have like the wall street guys Mm -hmm. type numbers type guys, you know, maybe they don't have that type of um, love for the game or the history of the game. So it could be more of like, these guys come in and say, "Hey, this is we can win like this, and this is gonna make us better." And go implement it. That's kind of what happened. And if that's the case, then you kind of gotta look around the league because there are a lot of these front offices that are built the same way now. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. I, I I have to ask you this because people will tell me, "Why didn't you ask?" But I hate when people ask me this. So you can give whatever bullshit answer you want. What do you think the punishment should be? Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, I, I've thought about it a lot. I think um, if it comes back and it's a 2017 thing where it's like, Hey, this is isolated to this year. I think that you can do the draft picks if it's one, if it's two, I think there's gotta be um, some suspension of their manager and possibly the general manager. I think those are kind of, I think everyone's almost like in an agreement with that, but if it extends to 2018 and 2019, Then I think we got to start talking about, you know, something a little bit different, possibly a postseason ban or something like that. Yeah. Something, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. If you say one year, um, I get it. You know, you did this thing and maybe MLB got wind of it and you you shut it down. But if you start doing it for multiple years, I think there's got to be like a huge punishment because they're trying to deter other teams. That's basically, I think all you want, all I want is you, you just, all we want is just, the game to not have this anymore. It's, yeah, it's, it's terrible, terrible for the game. game. If, if every, every time yeah, someone hits a home run or they're on a pitch that we think like, oh shit, maybe this team's doing it too. My thing is, I at this point, I'm so fed up with the Astros fans coming at me every single day that if the MLB comes out and says, we did a full investigation, th- we are 100% positive they cheated, I'll be like, fine, that's punishment enough for me because you guys can't say dick to me anymore. Shut up. I just, I just think they need to, they need to make it uh, harsh for the future, right? So like, I don't know. So what is, what is that though? Like, what's harsh? You know, like. Yeah, I mean, Jake said this once, and it, and it kind of sounds hot takey, but like, if it, if they did it for three seasons, fucking ban Hinch. If Look, they, I mean, that's, I mean, on the table, I guarantee you, that's on the table. Not only Hinch, but the front office as well. Like, they're looking at. Yeah. It's not just a suspension bans. Yeah. Yeah. So I've heard like Lunau's going to step down and be blackballed. And then, you know, Hinch might be suspended. But if it's a three years, if everything that's alleged comes to be out to be true, and who knows, you know, the buzzers, they seem crazy enough that maybe I hope they're not true because that's fucking yeah. you know, terrible. But if those come out to be true, it's, <laughs> they need, like, it needs to be big. What do you do, do with the players too then? You know, like. Dude, do I don't know. I don't know players? how, I don't know how you, you handle do? the players because I don't know how you handle the players. You, I don't think you can do that. But I think if you ban yeah. Hinch, no one cares. He's not like no one cares besides Hinch and his family and friends because he's not fucking Pete Rose, Hall of Famer. He's not Shoeless Joe Jackson, who was one of the best players of the of, in the league at the time. You know what I mean? It's it's AJ. I don't. I don't. He's well respected before this, but I understand what you're saying. It's it's pretty easy to do. And same thing with the general manager. Like, you know, no offense to either of those guys, but, you know, if you're at the helm, you got to take responsibility. I mean, they say it after every loss. Oh, I got to wear this one. This one's on me, whatever. Well, now yeah. you're getting accused of something, you know, that's game changing. Like history is going to remember this. If they get convicted, you know, maybe forever, you know, but oh, least I mean, it's, like, it's a big story. It's if this is uh, if it's all true and they get in trouble, this is the Astros identity for like, 20 years <laughs> like they would have to it'd be a long time before the astros aren't no Do you think they aren't, care if they, if they take a world series title away just say this hey we're gonna strip them of this title 
Like, obviously, you don't get to hang the flag. None of these guys do. Or, 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 or let me ask you: Do you think these guys get to call themselves World Series champions? Uh, they not publicly. Like, be, and even fans, like, it, you're not going to brag about it because everyone's it's just going to respond uh, and be like, "Well, uh, it's it's the scene from Semi Pro. It's uh, it's what's his name on the back of the bus, and he 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 turns to Monix and he goes." Yeah, ride right in the bench like a bitch. Like it's it's gonna be like you you guys like I think w- when you guys said players like no I think th- these players are gonna have stink on them for life like that's their punishment like yeah. and and I think the other thing and Trev I, I'm not saying this to hit your hit your core but baseball is a young person sport I mean the only time we've really seen old dudes thrive in baseball was the steroids era baseball is a young person sport that like. You know what, Springer, he's going to hit free agency next year. And, you know, Bregman's going to, Altuve's getting older and he's got a small body. Like, look what happened to Pedroia. Like, baseball falls off quickly. And I think these guys' careers are naturally kind of start going downhill. And everyone's going to say, oh, yeah, it's a lot tougher, Springer, when you don't know what bitch is coming, huh? And oh, I, yeah. I, th- I think that's no, what they're, they're getting. getting. Or not, they're going to get that for you know the next ten years, however long they play. That's all anyone's ever going to say to them. The funny thing that I think about with this situation is they paid a lot of these guys, right? Yeah, that's the weird part. They went a seven-year, hundred million dollars. Is that what it was? Something like that. Yeah. It turns out they were cheating for three years of your like reference on him. Like, <laughs> that's not a very smart you know, business move for you. Like you, maybe you don't know what this guy's like without, and, I, and I'll say this, I think he's a hell of a player and I don't think he needs the pitches. I think he's that good, but I mean, you're basing what you're paying this guy of what he has done for you. And maybe it, Bregman says, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rat you. Get, I'm going to rat out, pay me my money. Yes. It's gotta, it's, I mean, look, dude, <laughs> it's, it's such a, it's such a, like there's so many caveats with the situation. I mean, we, we just tend to talk about the cheating and then what's going to happen to the organization or what are the punishments going to be. But like stuff like that, like players who aren't that good or were on the team for a little bit, I think when, if this comes out, you're going to start seeing more and more people just come give a little bit more tidbits of information here, tidbits of information there. And we're going to start to see the whole picture. Like what there's no doubt. Hear, apparently the MLB offered like amnesty to any player that was on the Astros that comes out. Like we, you won't get in trouble. But uh, they're going to have there's gonna be people lining up for their amnesty. I promise you that because they don't. No one wants to deal with this. I mean, if you get suspended as a player, I mean, these guys are making big money, and you're going to lose four, five, six, seven million dollars. What know? about this punishment that I I thought of the other day? What if on opening day 2020 for the Astros, before the game starts, they have to take down the flag in front of the full stadium, and then they have to put up a flag that says 2017 cheated. And they have to slowly <laughs> pull it up, and then they do the national anthem. And then they start the 2020 season. That's pretty good punishment. That's really bad. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> talk about and, a highlight. And the camera crews—they have to scan the entire <laughs> audience as the it's got to be pi picture in picture, flag going up, and they just need to scan all the Astros fans' faces watching the cheated flag go up. And then I'll make a breakdown of all their faces. They should do that anyway. They would catch somebody so off guard if it's like proactively they did that at the start of 2020, just like drop the flag down. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> just kind of, just like, they, all had, they all had their rings and like gave the box back. Yeah, they just all had to open up their hands and then uh. one by one a guy walked down. Whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> And like a few lashings, like a guy behind that with like a like smacking. Yeah. Like that. Shame, shame. shame. <laughs> well, if they were smart, they would do that. They start proactively preparing. <laughs> That's pretty good though. I like that. One. Joe yeah. Joe Torre taking all the rings off the players is a pretty good image in my head. Dude, I, Joe Torre. I was watching this. The, this is. I'll, I'll save it. That was a tangent. I I, <laughs> I miss the old Joe Torre. Joe Torre in the front office sucks. He was part of this ejection or this brawl I just did. And he's like the Braves manager. And he was just such a fucking pistol of anger. Like just an yeah. angry to so miss him. Jake, you got, we're uh, running long. You've got a bunch of questions. Good. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go well, rapid I, fire. I, I, I've got one. Act, I, I've got one natural segue. Um, I got a segue from everything, but uh, we were talking about doling out the punishment. 
I was gonna do. I mean, this is this is the classic mayor for a day. I was I was gonna give you the commissioner for the day, and I I, I have my one example that me and John Boy aren't fully on because he likes AL and NL being separate. I think every team needs to play each other. Um, like I I think every year. Uh, Albert Pujols, I think year eight, this was his first time back in St. Louis and they had like a giant party. Like if if, if you're a Yankees fan in Colorado right now, you're not going to see Aaron Judge for like five years. And it's you're- like, I, I just want that to grow the game. I think it's something great about the NBA. If if Portland comes to LA, you're like, oh yeah, let me see Dane. Um, you know, so uh, you're commissioner for a day. You get to put in whatever you want. Um, you're slowly winning you me get? over on that one, Jake, just to let you know. Oh, I know, babe. I, I love the I love the reconfiguration of divisions, trying to get more regional matchups. I think that makes a lot of sense. It's tough with thirty teams, so we'd have to put thirty two in and do the eight eight eight. Eight. Eight 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 eight. Um, I like that. So I agree with you on that. Uh, more regionally more regional rivalries and everyone should play everybody. Cause I like, even this year, you know, I was watching the Dodgers play the Yankees and I was like super stoked. I thought that was such a cool matchup and that should happen more often. You like those uniforms? I love it. I love it, man. You like the all white uniform? Oh, oh, when they play the Dodgers. Yeah, no, 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 no. That was, <laughs> that was bad. Yeah, yeah. But the classic, like Dodger blue. And oh, the, yeah. The Dodgers, Those like, are nice. So love that. Uh, I think Universal DH is like an absolute no brainer. Nobody wants to see pitchers hit. I can't stand it. Thank you. Um, so that one's, that's also like the easy one. Uh, I think the one, uh, Another thing I would implement, and now I'm drawing a blank. I just had it on the at tip of my tongue. Um, gosh, I can't. How did that happen to me? That's incredible. I just had something that was awesome that I was going to say. It was great. You were so I, ready I, to I, rip it. I was so ready to get into it. <laughs> move, move on to the next question. I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay. okay. But Universal DH 100% reconfigurations of the divisions. I, I, I'm in for sure. About one shirtless um, player. Yeah, yeah, I got it. It came back to me. It came back yes, to me. Yes, yes. It's going to happen. Okay. Uh, you should be able to have uh, like a mercy rule. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A lot of, a lot of people are, are talking about that now, and we talked about that when we had beers together because That's right. That's right. We're, we're seeing so many position players pitch now. And and let me – everyone that listened to this or watched this and just got like disgusted by the thought of it, Here here's the best way to think of it. If your team is up – by eight runs in the seventh inning and it's eight nothing and you're like uh like I don't want to leave early but this is nothing well now after the seventh inning if it's 10 nothing you win so now you're rooting for two more runs because once that 10th run scores it's a walk-off and you're all like hell let's get out of here and if your team is losing eight nothing you're like you feel obligated to sit and stay because you want to be a real fan But then like, okay, just put us out of our misery. And you're like, all right, let me get out of here. So there is some like more fun and drama to it where I think both fans don't walk away feeling gypped of baseball. Yeah. And we, we I think we mentioned this as well. Like if you are at one of those games that gets cut short because of the mercy rule, like your ticket stub could then be used for whatever, a free beer next time or 25% off your next ticket purchase, whatever, you know, something, something to incentivize fans. Yeah, so I, I think like that, that one for me, I, I I love that because there are a lot of games that are just like, especially now, just way out of hand, and you want to save your bullpen. Like it's bullshit to, you know, have to throw a bunch of guys, and then all of a sudden those guys are going to go down the AAA. You're shuttling guys back and forth, so there's like it's a you know a butterfly effect. So I, I I'm all about the mercy rule. All right, all right, uh, a couple couple more quick ones I have. Um, what was your favorite steroid? We'll save that for next time. <laughs> Um, this, this is, this is like a, a kind of serious baseball question. As you see, we can, we can flip the switch on and off pretty quick. Um, we've been very impressed this year. Buck Showalter did some stuff for the Yankees and it was awesome. Like the dude put on a baseball clinic on the air, like one of the worst media presences you've ever seen on TV. Um, like it was, it was absurd. Said that weird. Um, is there a guy that you met in baseball, whether it's with the Twins organization or just someone you came across that you're like, that dude like knows baseball on a different level than me? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of guys who in different aspects of the game are just so knowledgeable. It's kind of, okay. you know, throughout baseball, you'll see that. So the guy that I always say is the most knowledgeable guy that I ever met was Paul Molitor. And maybe I'm a little biased there because – 
he was a coach of mine, like a roving instructor in the minor leagues. He helped me a lot. And then I had him as a manager as well. So I got to see, you know, I got, he, he, his wealth of knowledge just about the game is incredible. Like, you know, he, he obviously was a gifted athlete, but you know, the work he would do, um, even as a manager, like he'd be in the video room and he'd be in there and he'd be like, Hey, like, come here, like, let me show you something. And he'd say, look at these numbers. Like this guy, this pitcher, hasn't picked off the second base in six years. We are going to deal off. Like, a literally can't do it. Just little stupid shit like that. Like, you yeah, don't yeah. even think to look for. And he was he was so good at that. And he was another guy. He taught me how to dissect a pitcher, you know, you know, four tips. Him and Torrey Hunter were two of the best at it. And I, I tell people that all as well. But they really were. And I think um, – so I'll, I'll, say, I'll say Mulder was – was the most knowledgeable guy that I came across and got to like work with and, and pick his brain. His career stats are stupid, Jake. You ever seen him? 21 yeah. years. 21 seasons, 306 batting average, 369 on base percentage, 817 OPS. Over 21 years, that's what he averaged at. Yeah. He's a step. Super like soft spoken guy. You ask him about his numbers and like he just won't even like really talk about it, you know? And the thing I really like about him was he's so honest. Like he'll tell you like, but like in like the most polite way, like, Oh, you played like shit today. But like, he like will explain why you played like shit. <laughs> and uh, you just like walked away like, Oh, I think he was insulting me the entire time I was in his office, <laughs> but I feel good about myself. It's <laughs> yeah, nice. That was nice of him. We, we were blown away. Uh, Buck Showalter. And I, this is kind of embarrassing because maybe this is super obvious, but he was like, yeah, when pitchers off the mound, they normally miss high because on a mound they're throwing downhill. And I was like, 25 years of baseball and I never put that together. Interesting. Uh, but it was but just, it was one, just of one, of one of those small things. things. It was like, like yeah, yeah, that makes, that makes so, much so much sense. sense. And yeah, we're, we're running a little long. I, I think I've got one that, that's a Trevor Plouffe question. Holy we'll we'll shit, say it's dude. out. Molitor's Wikipedia is a bang of a story. Yeah, yeah he's, got, he's got a quote in the background. <laughs> Dude, the opening line to his personal life is during the early years of his career, Molitor began using cocaine and marijuana. <laughs> like, Boom. This is his personal life. <laughs> Usually it's about his wife and kids. <laughs> yeah, he, goes, <laughs> well, he doesn't like to talk about that, but uh, if you if you get to know him a little bit, he'll go into it. And again, now he's like the nicest, like most straight edge guy, but he's not shy to talk. He's like, yeah, I was young. I was in Toronto. Like, here we go. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Just Wikipedia going crazy. It was in Milwaukee, right? Or yeah, I think so. Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee. I, I I got a Trevor Plouffe question for you. It's it's the weekend. It's a Saturday. It's outside of baseball season. Your hot wife and your soon to be hot kids are out of town. <laughs> <laughs> What's that Saturday look like for Trevor Plouffe? What are you doing? Oh man, I guess it depends what time of year it is. You know. Okay. I went um, tuna fishing, like sport fishing, Ooh. the first time. And we drove 140 miles, like in this little kind of dinghy boat. And if for anybody that knows anything about boats and fishing, that's a lot. And it was not fun. <laughs> uh, but we caught, we caught one uh, tuna, like bluefin tuna in the entire time. And we thought we were going to catch like 25. But that one like got me hooked. So like I haven't gone again since then, but I – cannot wait to do that again so if you're asking me like ideal saturday it'd be like i got my cooler full of beers i'm going out in the ocean and i'm gonna go try to catch these big ass fish and like have fun while i'm doing it nice yeah the no other day you played jake you told me you played a game called over the line i googled it it looks like the most fun like i wish i knew about it when i was 16 through 25 but yeah when you told me you hadn't played it about hadn't played it that's i think it looks like a it looks like a California beach game. Interesting. That's what it looked yeah, like. Yeah, I, I wish I would have taken some videos of this uh, this tournament I was in because it, it's it's very competitive and it's very it's almost dangerous because you're only I want to say you're fifth you're fifteen yards you're forty five feet away from a guy swinging and you we use these um like those highlighter yellow softballs mm -hmm. but the soft ones. I saw it. Yeah, forty five feet away is insane how close you are with that so it's, it's it's a cool thing and it's like it's something you know my dad when he was coaching us when we were little like that would be fun at the end of practice we would do that and like people would go nuts we had like a great time doing it yeah i never heard of it looks fun yeah you also need to up your personal life wikipedia 
page, man. Compared to Paul Molitor, you got nothing. It just says, Ploof and his wife Olivia were married at Pepperdine University's Stauffer Chapel. They have two children. This is all true. I mean, do you do I have to do that? Like, aren't you like not supposed to update your own Wikipedia? Page? I don't. I don't know how it works. <laughs> or are you saying I need to like get into some troubles? So. Yeah, you just just feed them a lot. Mix it up, like mix like, it up a little bit. May or may have not I done drugs with Paul Molitor. The internet with you guys, maybe uh, maybe that's gonna happen. We can make something happen. Good. I'll, right. I'll have to defend myself from some Houston fans. Yeah, they'll come after you now. I know. I'm gonna name this video Ploof wants Houston banned for life. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on, man. Come on. I, I'm pretty sure I raked in Houston too, so I got that on there. Now oh. you can't say these things to me because now yeah. I have to go look into that. Jake knows this about me. <laughs> this is uh this is what the Houston fans don't understand. I like uh, research. Uh, I'm kinda nervous now that I said that. You're, you're nervous about this one? Because you said it about Yankee Stadium, but you were correct. Yeah, just so, so, at, at, at Minute Made, 271 batting average, 741 right. OPS. So uh, that's not great. Okay. You were, you were ploofing. ploofing. I had some homers there. Career 707 yeah. OPS versus the Astros. Okay, so I'm uh, sorry. So never mind. Houston fans got that on me. If you want to talk damn. shit. Damn. <laughs> no, 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 they're going to send that at you all day. <laughs> Your best stadium Better. was uh, Colorado. Nope. Chicago. Cubs. Put on a show. I played one game in, with, with the Cubs. That's, oh, uh, against, against the, the Cubs, Cubs, I guess, not at. Oh, Lakers. against the Cubs. Yeah, yeah. And that's wrong anyway, because you were you were the best against the Padres. Congrats. That's all. I need to look up with some of these stats. Yeah. Bruce, I know I know this. Bruce Chen was my guy. Like, if I have to, like, go, like, Ooh. That, he was my guy. So. Damn it. All right. Well, we'll end this, and then I'm going to look up your stats versus Bruce Chen. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah. Ploof will be on. He's going to become a regular. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a... Uh, we're going to line some things up, figure out what we want to do, but uh, say hi to Ploof and uh, don't say bye yet. But thanks for coming Cheers, on. Yeah. Jake, give us that ending you always give us. I just ploofed my pants. That's terrible. <laughs> that was bad. And there you have it. The Ploofster. A full hour covered everything. He did not answer Jake's steroid question, but I mean... Seems like a pretty open book, good guy. We're a fan. No, I, I said we're saving that for next time. And yeah, it was it was just really big of Trevor to admit that everyone in Major League Baseball thinks he has a hot wife. Like I'm glad I'm glad he could come on here and really just be open with us on that. It was nice of him. You know? Yeah. I mean, some guys would take that to their grave. Yeah. Like you should hear <clears throat> when I was in high school, man the compliments I would get about my group of friends, Jimmy hangs out with the coolest people. And I was always too embarrassed to let others know. Yeah. I don't know what that was. I thought you were about to make a joke about your sister being hot. Cause that was your go-to in high school. Uh, what? But yeah, Trevor Plouffe's a friend and he's going to be doing a lot more stuff with us. Um, and we're excited for that. Yeah. And now, we're done with the episode. 